Hey, how's it going, gamers? So, as I told you, I was going to do a reading about the stuff that I write. I guess I figured I should do it and see how it goes. It's an experiment. If uh, not a lot of people like it, then I won't do it anymore. But, but if people do, I'll just keep reading. So, anyways, uh, here's a go here it goes. Denagrio the Devil. Horns of a Devil. Heart of an Angel. Here the red-skinned wanderer walks. A religious tempest weighs upon his shoulders. Condemned at birth. Ah, woe Denagrio. His love is shunned by masked saints. Fun and play replaced by ungodly godsend. A finger points off to gallowed heights, killing those with pure souls and gaunt faces. They call for peace and love, they turn for their guns, stigma sting his branded flesh, Denagrio the devil, a tortured angel in disguise, beaten by humans of peaceful faith. Same faith, same belief, yet they kill and devour like demons, animals in their own rights. They cry out for deliverance with metal in their hands. A sickness fills their hearts. He sees this from the outskirts. Alone he wanders scarred. Poor Denagrio the misunderstood. The desert heat reminds him of home, the place of tricksters and chaos. He alone saw a better joy, an earthly home of happiness. He grips his hellfire horns in anger, his drenching tears hot like flame. A regret filled the innocent mind, a wish to never exist. Stars fall, gaze in sympathy. The desert grows cold, devil's breath becomes mist. He follows the endless road, a light rushes down the highway. There Denagrio rests upon the post, half asleep from the realm of reality. A metallic vessel stops beside him. Out comes a woman from a car. She stands before the tired de devil. A smile sincere came through her black hair. Denagrio dimly saw his true saint, a savior in the realm of the forgotten. She picked him up with her caring strength, placing the devil in a saving vessel. A new metal to him. Back to the realm that shunned him, the city of religious banter. A star upon her chest. She is now the new answer. To a new life. Denagrio the Devil. Chapter 1. The Arrival. The light of the highway flashed by like stinging rays burning into Denagrio's half-opened eyes. He briefly remembered a woman with long black hair carrying him into a metallic vessel. Being new to earth, he didn't know much about its inhabitants and the technology of the realm. Denagrio couldn't move. He was tired to try. Soon he would fade off into the darkness of sleep and allow his unconscious mind to take over. Come on, you oaf, he heard a woman's voice echo through his unconscious mind. He felt himself being carried over someone's shoulder. What an embarrassment for a devil to be carried so easily like a dead deer. His, un his consciousness would fade in and out, only allowing him to see bits and pieces of what was happening. He was constantly hearing the woman's voice speak to him while he watched blindly to what was happening to him. He saw himself being carried through a doorway and began to feel the coolness of the air conditioning upon his dry, rugged skin. You must be a devil, the woman said. From what the Eternas call hell, am I right? Who was this woman, he thought. He was famished, weak from malnutrition and dehydration. Being a demon of the underworld, he didn't need to think about food or water, but ever since the violation of the pact, 
he became true flesh and blood. The Nagrio became a devil of mortality. He felt himself be moved from her shoulder onto something soft. He tried to look through the blurriness of his vision. The thing he was on looked like a soft version of a widened chair. He heard what these were, a sofa. Suddenly he felt the shuffling of his clothes, like they were being pulled off his body. In only a matter of a couple minutes, he was lying there with nothing but his flesh and blood. Well, at least I know you're a boy, the woman said. His vision was being a little better to see the star amulet upon her chest. She tucked it within her cleavage behind her black v-neck shirt. His consciousness faded once again, and, and everything was all black. Only a few minutes passed until he felt a shock of life flow through him once again, realizing he was dumped into a tub of cold water, bringing a sudden jolt into his into consciousness. The experience was so frightening, Nagio yelped and started shouting incoherencies in the bathroom. He was now able to see well enough, and a gorgeous pale woman was staring back at him. Uh, her shoulder-length black hair covered her ears. She immediately grabbed onto him as soon he began flailing about. She was trying to calm him down. Calm down. Everything will be all right. Her soothing voice spoke to him in a motherly tone. Denagrio began to form words, but not enough to create sentences. Who? Who? He said, scared of his surroundings. Who am I? The woman asked, her green eyes staring into his pale white ones. My name is Nephilim. My friends call me Nephi. Her sincere smile seemed to give Denagrio a sense of safety. He began to look around the room of synthetic gray walls and porcelain furnishings. Where? Where? He managed to say. We're in Havenport, Nephi told him. The new great city after the destruction of the West Coast. Denagrio seemed to understand, but he felt his consciousness fading once again. He began tapping his chest with his hand, trying to say his name, but he fell back into the darkness of sleep, Nephi catching him before he hid his head on the faucet next to him. Oh dear, she said, you're going to be a handful. Once again, Denagrio's consciousness faded back to him, and his vision began to focus upon a dimly lit room. The room could have been pitch black if it weren't for a small beam of light coming through. A door was open somewhere else. He felt a soft surface underneath him with what seemed to be the sheets of fluffy accessories on the side his head was on. Bed, he thought to himself. I'm in a bed. It feels so nice. He wished he could stay there and rest for the whole day. But his curiosity kept aching at him. His eyes began to look around the room, seeing a metallic door closet in front of the bed, with a door just ajar next to him. The bed was queen-sized, and a large window reached from one corner of the room to the next, was above the resting place, overlooking the whole room. It had shades that were closed, leaving out any light from the outside. There was a nightstand next to him with a hologram alarm clock on top of it and a built-in lamp next to it. 6 a.m. floated over the projector in blue. The bed was right next to a wall, so there was no fear of falling off on the left side of the room. Denagrio found himself still naked, but this time with a long towel around his waist, covering up what some called in the underworld one of his best features. He got up from the bed and sat on the edge. He put a hand on his forehead, which was in the middle of the two large bases of his horns that covered upwards and stopped before being only a few centimeters of being taller than his head. 
When he looked up, he saw another doorway on the other side of the room, and saw a wet trail coming from the door to the bed. To that conclusion he knew this was the bathroom where Nephi wa washed him. As soon as he put a foot into the doorway, the light came on, stinging his eyes for a moment, forcing him to wince. The pain soon went away, and he turned to see the metal sink in a porcelain counter and large mirror, which he looked at his reflection. His shaggy black hair grew naturally down the back of his head, giving him a sharp widow's peak. His white eyes replaced his devilish red ones he had when he was back in hell. He stroked the small patch of beard he had that grew in the middle of his chin. Many of his brothers and sisters seemed to have hated it, saying it looked like a rat was stuck on his face. The patch was too small for a rat, though. A small mouse would have been more accurate. He turned and looked at the toilet, a porcelain throne as always, and saw on the closed lid an outfit that seemed to have been laid for him. After five minutes he was looking at himself in the mirror. He looked at the black rock concert t-shirt he had on, which left open the midsection of his body, showing his inward belly button and red skin. The blue faded jeans weren't any better either, since it held him tight, accentuating his rear among other things. Still, he felt a great discomfort from wearing the pants until he took one of his black fingernails, supernaturally turning it into a sharp weapon, and cut the upper part of the jeans, allowing his tail with the heart-shaped end to stick out. He looked at the logo of the rock band on his t-shirt, which said Hell's Rejection on it, which didn't make Denagrio feel better about his situation. Leaving the bathroom, he finally took a peek through the opening of the doorway where he heard a conversation going on. He saw a rising sun through a great wall of glass in what seemed to be a living room, with a long sofa facing the door he was behind, a round glass coffee table in front of it, and an upper level with more furnishings he couldn't see clearly at the moment. He could see the living room was rather large, and that whoever was the sole proprietor of this home was doing well for themselves. He saw three people speaking on the couch. One he recognized as Nephi, but the others were complete strangers. What was even stranger was that they all wore the star amulet like Nephi's. You understand that having a devil in your home, one associate spoke, you will be the one in most danger with the law enforcement. The one that spoke was a rather tall woman in a black robe-like dress. The sun's blinding rays kept Denagrio from seeing her face, but he could see in silhouette that she was wearing her hair up. A man sat next to her. His head was shaved, and he seemed rather old, like he was leaving middle age and going into his golden years. He wore a more formal outfit, with vest, dress shirt, and black pants. You know they do a routine census check with every district, the man said. His mere existence can put you at risk. Don't worry about me, Nethi assured them. I am more capable in keeping him in my protection. I still have a few tricks of subterfuge up my sleeve. You really should rejoin the resistance, dear friend, the woman said. You are a great acid in the field. I can, dear friend, Nephi spoke in sadness. Not after losing him. The two associates looked at each other for a moment before speaking again. You are right, the man reassured. We shouldn't pry. You have lost so much already. But just remember that you still have a family to go to, the woman said. If you ever change your mind... Nephi nodded in silence, and the two left the apartment, leaving Nephi to her thoughts. Denagrio felt he should confront her to get answers to what was going on. The door creaked open, and Nephi's green eyes shot up to meet his white ones again. "'What's going on here?' Denagrio questioned as he entered the room. 
Nephi couldn't help but giggle, putting a hand to her smiling lips. You look gorgeous, Nephi said, referring to Denagrio's new wardrobe. Denagrio was getting irritated, but he couldn't help blushing, making his face even more red than before. All right, all right, Nephi spoke. Taking his hand and having him sit on the sofa, Denagrio was ready to listen to what she had to say. What is this place? Denagrio asked. Havenport? Why did everyone try to kill me the first moment I stepped into Earth? All right, let me start from the beginning, okay? Nephi said, Twenty years ago, the year I was born, the final battle of the Second American Civil War was being fought. It was liberals versus conservatives. The last election caused a terror in America. The conservatives had massive firepower and destroyed the whole West Coast, taking over California, Oregon, and Washington. Now the day was theirs, the war was over, and everyone went under imperial rule after that. After the war, there were no liberals or conservatives. Instead, there was the Eterna, which was a group of pious dictators. They turned the whole West Coast into a massive city known as Havenport. But there was nothing here that spoke haven to anyone except the Eterna and Eterna collaborators. Anything they found ungodly would be either exiled or executed. They would torture their victims and brand them with crucifixes on their skins, a statement of treason that labeled them as enemies of the Empire. Denagrio nodded as he listened, but one thing he wondered was why they didn't kill him instead of exiling him. I'm a devil, he spoke. Such religious order hated my kind for eons. Why exile me? Why not execute me like the rest? Hell is your domain, she said. There you are all powerful, but here you are nothing but an avatar of your former self. That being said, you can't die conventionally, but with specific instruments of the religious order. Holy water, blessed crucifix, all that jazz. You can't die out there from malnourishment or dehydration. You merely go into a coma and never wake up. What a messed up world, huh? Yeah. Denagio sighed. So these pricks would rather have me suffer on earth, rather return me to hell, like I would be the tortured soul rather than the other way around. Typical. I hope you don't mind me asking, Nephi got into Denagrio's attention. Why did you leave hell? Denagrio closed his eyes as though wondering the same thing. He looked at her with regret in his face. First off, it isn't hell, he began. It's the underworld. Hell was the name given by those who couldn't understand my kind. In the beginning we were tricksters and playful beings. Early humans called us satyrs. We lived in peace with them for a certain amount of time. So much peace came between us that many satyrs came to earth and took it as a new home. That all changed in the Middle Ages. Soon a new religious order came and branded us as agents of evil. That was when we were devils. And our realm of existence became hell. We adopted the names... And when the Crusades came, we were wiped from the world of mankind. Ever since my kind waged war against the humans, I didn't want to be one of them. I took the brave route and traveled to the world of Earth, doing that violated my obligations in the pact, turning me into true flesh and blood. Although I still can't die, I can be harmed and all human characteristics flowed into me like a wind of change, suppressing my former powers. Nephi saw he was angry at himself. Denagrio scratched his head, wondering what he was thinking. All I wanted to do was live among humans like my ancestors, he said. But now I'm here... And all the hopes and dreams of having fun and playing around with other humans have been crushed. I was tortured, scarred, 
beaten. The only thing they couldn't do was brand me because my immunity to fire and heat. Nephilim hugged him closely, surprising even him, but he didn't deny himself the comfort. After all the pain he endured, he was finally getting along with a human, which was all he wanted. I'm sorry all this happened to you, but your dream isn't in vain yet, she told him. There are still humans that care. Though he saw the truth in her words, Denagrio couldn't overlook the more frightening truth of the dystopia he fell into unknowingly. But from this day forth he knew he had a long way to go before he could ever gain his wish. He prayed that he wouldn't have to run into the infamous Eterna again. So that was chapter one from Denagrio the Double. It's actually sort of a backstory of what my avatar pretty much goes through. This is like his story. So yeah. Kind of cool, huh? So anyways, go ahead, like, comment, and uh, if you if you like me reading this to you, yeah, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and keep on keep on with it. By the way, I'm sorry about my, uh, I'm sorry if I sounded like I was a little stuffed up. I do have a little bit of a cold. Hey, the good thing is, it ain't the flu, right? So anyways, have sexual relations with that like button. And, and if you want to be a gamer to gay, <laughs> I can't do that. It must be because I'm sick. And if you want to be a gamer today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. And remember, keep calm and game on. See you guys.